In today's music business tip, we'll be discussing how to get your music pitched to record labels. Now, it's the big dream that we all have as far as trying to get signed to a record label because the record label just represents all the stuff that we don't know how to do for ourselves or don't know how to do very well, right? Music marketing, getting that great distribution deal, doing live shows and touring and getting linked up with featured artists. And we think that the record label is going to do all these things for us. So it's a big question on, well, how do we do it? And for me, even earlier in my career, it was something that I was like, man, if only, you know, a record label would discover me or even a manager. And so I really felt that desire to kind of reach out and let them know about what I'm doing. So I'm going to give you my best do's and don'ts, okay? Because I have a lot of experience with this now as an actual music attorney coming up on, on nine years. So first of all, you want to make sure that you do research before you just kind of arbitrarily reach out to a record label. Okay, so just meaning, you know, make sure it's a good fit for you, right? Because record labels often do have kind of a genre that they like to stick in. And so make sure you actually fit with the label, because if you're so lucky that they open your stuff, they look at your music, you kind of only get that one shot. So make sure you've actually done research to make sure they're a good fit for you and or your band. Now, the way that you can kind of do this sometimes if you're like, well, I don't know where to start. We'll start with someone that you really like who's in your genre and reverse engineer. And you can usually see who the label is by just looking up like on Spotify. It's it usually says in the distribution notes um, who the label is. You can also Google it. I mean, it's like public information. So you can find it, but basically just do your research, make a little list of the labels, you know, your, your dream labels and go from there. All right. So then you're going to find contact information. Now, before you actually reach out to them, we're going to talk about what you need to send. But of course, you need to make sure you can actually reach out to these labels. This is how I do it. All right. So first and foremost, what you're going to do is you're going to check Facebook. All right, this may or may not be intuitive, but it totally works a lot of the time, especially for more like mid to small sized record labels. They often have an email or they have an address or they have a phone number that is listed publicly on Facebook. If you don't find something on Facebook, then check Instagram. Usually less times do I find uh, contact information on Instagram, but you can message them on Instagram. I find that more companies and or people have someone maintaining the account, right? The messages on Instagram. So you're probably gonna get a response. You'll be like, hey, wanna send you, you know, uh, wanna reach out about possibly getting signs. What's a good email? Often they'll tell you. Also on Instagram, it shows you the business email. So these are all really good ways, Facebook, Instagram, and then you go to the website. Now I'm starting with a big boy, all right? I'm going with Universal. Typically, you're not just gonna reach out to Universal because Universal is this giant that has so many imprints, right? So sub labels signed underneath it. So typically you actually wanna reach out to one of the imprints, but let's pretend you're like, I wanna you know, be signed with Universal. On almost every website, at the very bottom, there's what's called terms of service, okay? Right here. You click on terms of service and then there's this big long contract that actually you agree to by using the website, just so you know. But in any case, what I'll do, because I'm not gonna sit here and read through this, is that I'll usually, and, and excuse me if you are an Apple user, but for me, I am on PC, so it's control F. So you can search keywords, right? So sometimes I'll search just the at symbol because if there is a website, it will be info at, you know, ung.com. So for this, it didn't bring something up. So then the next one I'll try is usually just contact, right? So here we go. Here are all the options for contact, scrolling, 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 and there we go, right? So we have an actual physical address. So these are some of the best ways as far as finding contact information. And like I said, when it comes to like more of the mid to small sized labels, oftentimes they just have the information listed on the social media accounts. So that's a really good place to start. So you're going to send an email and let me give you a couple quick tips here. Okay. Don't send your life story in the email. Keep in mind that the person who's going to be receiving your email is very busy and they're probably receiving a lot of emails. So you want to be respectful of their time by keeping your summary short and sweet. Okay. You can tell someone your life story later for now, the person getting that email doesn't care. All right. Short and sweet and personalize it. Hey, I saw that, you know, you signed or, or have these people on your roster. I'm very similar in sound to what they're doing. I'm looking for representation. So here are some samples of my music. 
Now, when it comes to, you know, well, how do we send the songs or the videos? Don't attach files. If you attach files, that means that someone likely needs to download it, right? And we're all worried about bugs and viruses in these files. They're not going to do it. So then you might say, well, what about a Dropbox link? Let me send a Dropbox link with like my last three albums so they can get a real sense of what I'm doing. Don't do that. Okay. Again, time efficiency. Are they going to open your link? Are they going to click through your things? The best way to do this, in my opinion, when it comes to just a quick way to listen to music, there are two. Okay. The first is that if you want to provide a link to something, make it like a YouTube video or make it to a Spotify song. So make it so it's very easy. It's literally one click and then they're hearing or seeing your music, your music video. And then that's a higher likelihood that they're actually going to get an idea of what you're doing. Number two, and this is the super pro way, actually send an EPK. An EPK is an electronic press kit. All right, so for me, there's two ways that you can do this, right? If you have PowerPoint, which I do, and I'll show you on my desktop, we can just edit a PowerPoint. But if you don't, guess what? Everyone has Gmail, or <laughs> almost everyone has Gmail, but Google, it's called Google Slides, which is basically, you know, PowerPoint. So if you go into Google Slides, you just, go, you know, put it on Google, pull it up, and then you can just immediately start editing. Now, the reason why I like using this platform, I and mean, I'm going to walk you through my literal EPK so you can see how I do this and why I do it this way. The reason I love it is because it's so easy to update this thing. It's a pain in the butt if you're going to build something on a website because you can do like video EPKs, you can do website EPKs. But for me, I really like something that I can make a quick change in. And it's not going to be like, oh, I need to now go and re-edit the video and re-export it because stuff gets old really fast. So let me show you. Let's go back to the EPK. All right. So here's mine, right? This is just a PowerPoint. And on, in mine, I have a total of 12 slides because you don't want to make this insanely long and it's going to take forever to get through. But let me explain, okay? So I'll do usually a cover page. What I do is not, you know, perfect, I'm sure, but it's just my style, okay? So I have my name, what kind of genre do I do? Dark, dark pop, okay? And then what year was this recently updated? So they know this was actually updated recently. Now, it's really good to have a bio, okay? If you're gonna start with the bio, beautiful, but try to be as efficient with the space as possible. Because again, you are asking someone to read. Who likes reading? <laughs> no one. So for me, I, I, I focus on two things. Right here I go, Miss Crystal's dark pop sound is a fusion of Nine Inch Nails, Billie Eilish, and Poppy, okay? Um, her music works well with rock, industrial rock, rock pop, pop lineups, and playlists. And then also, as far as live shows, you know, on my singing style, my voice, people compare me to Evanescence. So that immediately gives someone at least a little, little bit of an idea of what I do, what my style is, and then they can now go on. And the next big question that people are real curious about is, what's your social media reach, right? That just is. If a record label is going to check you out, that's usually the first question that they have. They don't even need to hear you. If they see that you are working and you are you know, hustling and building your social media, that's always a really good sign, okay? And that's going to play well for you. So it's good to have a slide dedicated to your social media. You don't have to include every single platform. Just include the ones that you think, you know, highlight you the best. So, you know, here's the other thing too. Social media numbers often change pretty quickly, right? So that's another reason why I really like doing this in PowerPoint. So in any case, I focus on, you know, some of my bigger platforms, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Spotify. And then I take the time to actually hyperlink this, right? So, you know, it's just really simple. You go like this, you right click, and then you can do, and I already have it right there. So it otherwise would have been like, you know, add a link. So you add a link so that once they have this, they can actually just click it. It's going to then open the social media platform so they can see and then they'll be able to get an idea of your engagement to actually scroll and look through your content. So it's really nice when you can hyperlink it. All right, so then cruising on, next, press. If you have it, beautiful, include it. Don't include every single one. Okay, right here, we've included four. And honestly, I think three probably is enough. But, you know, as far as some of the big ones, right? We had a cover story. We were, you know, named a top 10 band, or I say we, but me. 
I was named a top 10 band to see at South by Southwest. So these are all really cool things. And it just highlights that, you know, we're kind of hustling and doing our thing. And so then I also have recent music. Again, hyperlinking is really important. The beauty of PowerPoint is you can drag and drop, right? And format, it's very intuitive. It's very easy to use. But in any case, for these releases, right? So we hyperlink so they can launch to a music platform. I have videos. I also note the views, right? So to the extent that something has done pretty good, great, note that. And then we go a step further. This isn't really and entirely necessary, but I like to have it in my EPK, which is what are the show options, right? So I can use this when I'm trying to get bookings. And so I'll be like, you know, our various setups, we have the full band version. We have a version that is just me and a piano. Okay. And then for anyone who needs the specs for the performance, here's all the stuff that we need when we're doing shows, we have different stage plots. So I include all of this in our EPK because it just covers a lot. And then the last, we will have contact information if they want to get in touch. So having an EPK is great for anything you're trying to do, whether you're trying to get signed with a manager or in this case, a record label. So um, that's the platform that I like to use. But again, you can build an EPK anywhere and anyhow. It can be a video. It can be a website. I think Reverb Nation helps you out. So you can use that platform as well. All right, so back to then how are we using the EPK? Well, you go in and in your PowerPoint or if you're using Google Slides, you just export it, right? So you go to File, Export, and then there's an option to create as an Adobe PDF. So that's gonna compress the EPK down into a PDF. So now it's a smaller file and then you can just send it and attach it to your email and most people can just view it from the email, they don't have to download. And so I have found that this works best for me. It's definitely the one that I like to use. When you are reaching out to potential record labels or someone that you want to sign you in any kind of way, make sure best foot forward, okay? Find good contact information because if you just send it to like an info at universal.com, someone might not ever find it. If you can find John at universal.com, there's a better chance that you know, John's gonna be able to pass it along to the right person, but just see if you can find the most relevant contact information. And then when you put together your email, make it as personalized as possible and do a lot of volume. It's really important. Don't just reach out to like three record labels and, and then get down on yourself because maybe those record labels didn't respond to you, okay? So it's really important that you follow up. It's really important that you hit as many companies as possible. And then keep this in mind, guys, always try to be objective. Don't just be kind of reaching out and like you don't have anything going on. You haven't released music or maybe you released one song four years ago. If you're reaching out because you want someone to check out your stuff, there's a good chance they're going to check out your stuff. If you aren't posting on social media, if you aren't releasing music, if you aren't doing anything that's going to be attractive to a record label, then don't be surprised when you don't get a call back or an email back or you don't get signed. So what I would do before sending the email, before doing all the things is really take a step back, right? When was your last song release? How's your social media doing? And maybe make sure you build that up. The best clients that I've represented when we do deals with record labels are the ones who are working their own music business, right? Who are working and putting out music and working their social media because we have leverage now. So keep that all in mind, okay? Be objective and just see, are you even ready for the deal? And in the meantime, you can learn and practice music marketing, which is a baseline to everything you're gonna do in your music career. And then uh, if you want it, I have a free PDF for you. It's down in the description and it gives you some of my best tips when it comes to really mastering the music business. And like I said, it's totally free. So get that, like, and subscribe if you found this helpful and I'll see you guys on the next one.